Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you. That you also may be where I am. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born, time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh. Time to mourn and a time to dance. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never, ever fun. Sure. I got to fast and pray, stay in the mighty way. I got to keep my life clean. Every day I want to go with him. When he comes back, I've come too far. God is, God is, God is, He is, God is my own. God is my joy in times of sorrow. Mm, yes, he is. God, God is my own. God is my today and my tomorrow. Mm -hmm. God, God is my own.
Can we give God a great big hand of praise? Come on. Come on. Let's clap our hands. Let's give God great praise in this house. First and foremost for the life of Brother Kenneth Thomas. Can we thank God for him? Can we thank God for this family? Now do me just one more favor. Can we give Jesus a great big hand of praise? Come on, bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Come on, with the clapping of your hands, with the fruit of your lips, come on, tell God something wonderful. He's mighty, he's awesome. He's altogether lovely. He's altogether wonderful. A great God deserves great praise. A great God deserves great praise. We don't mourn like those who have no hope. For we know that God is with us even though our hearts are heavy. Don't let nobody tell you you can't cry. Don't let nobody tell you you can't weep because God is with you even in your tears. Come on, somebody. Amen. So we want to be a strength to this family. We want to we wanna pull, amen, on God to bless us in a great way and have his way even in our time of bereavement. So I'm going to ask, with the exception of the family, that everyone would stand as we lift our opening hymn, Glory to His Name. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing of sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Amen. Let's lift it up to the glory of God the Father. Down at the cross, down at the cross. Down where from clean. Oh, there. Singing glory. Come on, church. I'm singing glory to his name. Singing glory to his name. Singing there to my heart. Singing glory. Look at that second verse. I am so wondrously saved. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides. There at singing glory to come on church I'm singing glory singing glory to his name singing there Singing glory. Last verse. Come to this fountain. Come on. Come to this fountain so rich and cast on. Plunging into day. Singing glory. Come on. Put your hands on it. Come on. Well, I'm singing glory. Singing glory to his name. I'm singing there to my heart. Singing glory. Last time. Come on, lift that refrain again. Come on, church. I'm singing glory. Singing glory to his name. I'm singing there to my heart. Singing glory 
sacred to his. Come on, give God great praise in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. Reverend Glenn Griffin, pastor of the Gibson Temple Baptist Church, is coming at this time to offer a prayer of comfort. Let's say amen for him as he comes at this time. Let's bow our heads together. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry. Not some things, but everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Our gracious and our wonderful Father, we come to you this morning. Hearts are heavy, but we come as humbly as we know how. And God, even though our hearts are heavy, we can still lift up our heads because we realize that we hold on to your precious promises that the world cannot claim to. You said in your word that all things work together for good them that love God who are called according to his purpose. God, you said that even in times of trial and tribulation, not for everything, but in everything, we ought to be able to give some thanks. And we celebrate you on this morning because simply you are too wise to ever do anything foolish. You're too kind to do anything mean. And Lord, you are just too full of grace to do anything, Lord, that will hurt or harm us. So Father, this morning, we lift up this family. We lift them up on every leaning side. God, where they are worn, Lord, build them up. God, where they feel torn down, we pray that you would re-strengthen them. Remind them of your word on this morning that weeping may endure for a night but joy will come in the morning. Lord, if you don't mind, stop by this place this morning and remind this family that you have all power in your hands. Father, if you don't mind this morning, remind them that you said in your word that you are the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in you, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. Father, remind them in your word that you simply said in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. You've gone to prepare a place for you. Now, Father, we pray, Lord, for the family, Lord. We pray that you would strengthen the Lord. We pray for the preacher this morning. God, that even in this heavy hour, that you would make preaching easy for him. God, that somebody would come to know you as Lord and personal Savior. Now, Father, we bless you and we thank you for this time. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the following to come at this time. We'll have our Old Testament scripture reading by Darius R. Thomas. Following the Old Testament reading, we'll have the New Testament reading by Shalia Thomas. Following the scripture readings, we will have a selection from the Sanctuary Choir of Temple Baptist Church, and then following them, We'll have our acknowledgments, resolution, and obituary by the administrative assistant here at Temple, Sister Osceola E. Williams. Say amen for them as they come in that order. Good morning, everyone. Today I will be reading to you from Psalm 23, uh, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me 
in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. everyone. It's good to see you all. I will be reading John, the New Testament, John, um, verses 1 through 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, also believe in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am, where you know the way to the place where I am going.
The family of Kenneth Thomas wishes to thank everyone for all the acts of kindness, support, and encouragement during our pre period of mourning. May God continue to bless each of you, the Thomas family. Although they have received many um, cards and acknowledgments, food and just kindness, people praying for them, all acts of kindness will be acknowledged at a later date. They have selected a few cards to be read at this time. With sympathy in loss of your husband, no time on earth is long enough to share with those we love. Nothing can prepare our hearts to say goodbye. May the sympathy of those who care about you and the precious memories of your husband help to comfort you at this time. The Tuckers. Praying for your loss. Memories are gifts our hearts receive to bring gentle comfort as we grieve. To Valerie and family. Asking God to wrap you in his faithful love and comfort you with his cherished memories you hold dear. May God bless you and your family, deacon and deaconess of Shiloh Baptist Church. The journey that takes that life takes us on can be unexpected. Walk bravely among the memories as you find peace. Thinking of you, the Mother's Board of Shiloh Baptist Church, Mother Bethany, Betty Bethel, President, and Reverend Marvin Barner, Pastor. A brother is someone who gives you lots to remember, to laugh about, and to be grateful for. To love. Gerald, hope you can smile even though your tears, even through your tears, when you think about how lucky you were to have him for a brother. And all he means to you now and always, with sympathy, love, and prayer, Miss Stein. Celebrating a wonderful life. Joining with you in celebration of a life well lived in honor of someone who meant so much to you and to so many others, Shiloh Baptist Church Usher Board. With sympathy, thinking of you with heart filled with um, compassion and love, may you forever hold on tight to all the memories sending straight strength. God bless you, love Darlene. Praying for you in your loss. May God give you strength to bear this loss as only he can. I am so sorry for your loss. Just know that you are loved and I am here for you, Nessa. Chester High, class of 1970. To Miss Dolores Slaughter and family, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would, not, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. John 14, 1 through 3. The officers and members of the class of Chester High, 1970, bow in humble submission to the will of Almighty God who removed from your midst your beloved brother, Kenneth Thomas. We know that you will miss him greatly, but hold him dearly in your heart. May you cherish all the memories of your loved one and the life of blessings you were allowed to share together. The class of 1970 officers offers our heartfelt sympathy, prayers, and support to the entire Slaughter and Thomas families during this time of your sorrow. We are praying that the promise of peace that surpass, surpass, surpasses all understanding will be granted unto all of you at this difficult time. May God's love sustain you now and comfort you in the days ahead, ahead submitted by the Chester class of 1970. To Sister Geraldine Thomas and family, the officers and members of Temple Baptist Trustee Board, 736 West 7th Street, Chester, PA, 
bow in humble submission to the will of God, having called home from labor your brother, Kenneth Thomas. Whereas Kenneth was known by many throughout the city of Chester, he knew ahead of time that it wouldn't be long before he would have to say so long to his family. Yet he was spared in saying so, but went peacefully in sleep. A good husband, father, brother, uncle, relative, and caretaker to many, he was loved by all who came in contact with him and always showed concern for others. Family, be encouraged because the Bible tells us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So on Friday morning, peacefully, he took his flight. However, he, he fought a good fight and leaves a legacy of love for all to emulate. We are assured his first request was to see Jesus. And then, can you imagine the big reunion with mom, pops, and all going up yonder on Hallelujah Boulevard? All loved ones gathering together and having a good time. In light from the family is gone. A voice we all loved is stilled. A place is vacant in the home which never can be filled. Sleep on, Kenneth. Sleep on and take your rest. We all loved you, but God loved you best. To the family, may the grace and the love of God guide you through these difficult hours, and may the um, precious memories of your loved one live on in your hearts and bring you comfort and peace. There is no storm that God won't carry you through. No bridge that God won't help you cross. No battle that God won't help you win. No heartache that God won't help you let go of. He is so much bigger than anything you will ever face. Le leave everything in his hands and embrace this day confidently knowing that he will take care of you. Our love and sincere sympathy for God's comfort to your family, the trustee board of Temple Baptist Church, trustee Lamont F. Rawlings, trustee um, board chairman, Reverend Dr. Marvin L. Tiller, pastor. And God shall wipe away all, every t all tears from your eyes, and there will be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelations 21, four. To trustee Geraldine Thomas and the Thomas family, the officers and members of the senior usher board of Temple Baptist Church extend to you our sincere condolences as you grieve the passing of your brother, beloved brother, Kenneth Thomas, who went to be with the Lord on March 15, 2024. Although your life will be forever changed by Kenneth's passing, your belief in God will sustain you and your family during this mourning period. May you cherish the memories, this, uh, memories, may your memories sustain you in the days ahead. Though you grieve now, may it help you know that you are not alone. The Senior Usher Board is available to offer our support wherever, whenever needed. And we will continue to pray that God gives you and the Thomas family, the strength needed in the coming days. When hope that are brightest like autumn has flown, when hearts that we treasured have left us alone, aware from the sadness of grief shall we flee, if faith has no refuge, dear Savior, in thee. When dark are the storm clouds above that Roll, and wild are the surges that break over the soul. Aware from the tempest of life should we flee, through faith may be tested, and life and love may be tried. How peaceful the heaven from all may abide. Where with the tempest our comfort may be, we still have a refuge, dear Savior, in thee. 
Sorrowfully submitted, Sister Osceola E. Williams, Vice President, Senior Usher Board, Reverend Marvin L. Tilly, Jr., Pastor. Trustee Geraldine Thomas, Sister Mary E. Thomas, and the entire Thomas family, the pastor, officers, and your Temple Baptist Church family wish to extend to you our sincere condolences as you mourn the passing of your bro beloved brother, Kenneth Thomas. We want to comfort you, and we want you to remember Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. Therefore, we pray the healing hands of Jesus will touch you at this time and give you the peace that sustains and surpasses all understanding. Although your tears are many and your burdens are heavy at this time, keep trusting in God the Father, for only he can wipe away e your tears and ease your burdens. Please know that during this trying time, your church family is praying that God will surround you in his loving arms and that his peace will be your strength. There is one who knows why you are sad. There is one who cares for you. Just look to him and trust in him and God will see you through. God knows your loss and sorrow. God hears your prayers above. Each day he freely gives you the strength of his great love. In Christian love, Reverend Marvin L. Tiller, Senior Pastor, Deacon Lloyd Hudson, Chairman of the Deacon Board, Sister Osceola E. Williams, Administrator of the Deacon. Resolution. The Griffin Greens Bates Family Reunion. No matter what your trials are or how big your mountain seems, the Lord is there to see you through. He'll give, he'll go to all extremes. So if your cross seems hard to bear and you know not what to do, the one who loves you most of all will be there to see you through. We, the members of the GGB, Philadelphia Chapter, Philadelphia, Chester, New Jersey, and Delaware, bow in humble submission to the obedience of God for making, realizing that God, in his unlimited wisdom, has seen fit to move from our midst our beloved cousin, affectionately known as Kenny Thomas by means of transition from the old house to a new house. Whereas Cousin Kenny established early in life the obedience of God and confirmed throughout his life a sincere obedience to God. Whereas Cousin Kenneth professed a hope in, G in Christ in his early years of life and, where, and was an active and regular supporter of family and all that, that stood for it. Whereas Kenneth Thomas was a man who loved the Lord and his eagles and realized that he could love them both because both of them gave him joy on Sunday. Whereas not only in this a loss, not, I'm sorry, whereas not only is this a loss of a beloved husband who loved one woman for 42 years, more than half of his life, a father who loved his children, a brother who gave great advice, a grandfather, Papa, who realized the blessing of second generation relationships, an uncle, a brother-in-law, an all around good friend. He was a good man who could show empathy as a pr prison guard and gave daily direction and guidance as one of Septon's premier drivers for t 21 years. He was a man who was always able, available to share an encouraging word and demonstrate strong support to those in need. Whereas the passing of our beloved, we know that this is the will of God and there is a human tie that has been broken, which bleeds the heart in agony and pain. We are encouraged and, and consoled in the words of Jesus who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Therefore, be a resolve that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of, our, of your lives. We cannot replace our beloved cousin Kenny, but we'll remember him always. 
therefore be a resolve that we hold the family up in prayer and show our support and love to the family because in the passing of Cousin Kenny, done by the order of the Griffin Green Bates Family Union, Philadelphia chapter, Delaware, New Jersey chapter, on the 12th day of April, 2024, Glenn E. Griffin, chapter president, Christine, uh, Christian Elijah Griffin, chapter vice president, Valerie Marie Griffin, chapter treasurer, Valerie G. Winslow, secretary, Elizabeth May, Marie Griffin, chapter. The obituary, reflections of his life. Kenneth Thomas, 64, son of the late Annette Paddlefoot and Jacob Strand, and the sixth of their eight children of Chester, PA, died March 15th. Kenneth, or KT, as he was affectionately called, attended Temple Baptist Church where he was baptized as a child. He also attended Chester Upland Schools and graduated from Chester High in 1978. After high school, he received training as an auto mechanic at the Delaware County PA Trade School. Kenny was a, had a passion for collecting and driving classic cars, especially Corvettes. He even owned a matching orange Corvette and motorcycle. He loved anything that moved on wheels. Kenny was a man's man. He also enjoyed fishing, barbecuing, cheering for the Eagle, Philadelphia Eagles, sporting his caps and fancy hats, donning jewelry and stylish clothing, and listening to surveillance incidents on the police scanner. He loved to travel and especially enjoyed boats and water, as well as the mountains. He, he also enjoyed eating out at some of the fav of his favorite restaurants, fancying himself as a restaurant connoisseur. Kenny was also a real family man. He loved gathering and hosting family and holiday events, taking his family on trips, bringing an instrumental, being an instrumental part of raising his grandchildren, ensuring they were on the path of education and success. Not only did he teach his grandchildren how to drive, but he made sure they always had reliable transportation from among his fleet of cars to get them to work and around town. In fact, Kenny believed in guiding all of the youth in his family. They never wanted Pop Pop or Uncle Kenny to know when they messed up, they would surely disappoint him. Kenny was a human map with a great sense of direction and could uh, find his way to any location. He was often called on by family and friends alike to advise on car buying or for help after accidents or when they um, were stranded. He was the transportation fix-it man. It was no surprise that Kenny spent 21 years as a bus operator for SEPTA. Kenny started his career as an auto mechanic at Sears and Media. He also held jobs at Boeing and as a prison guard at both Delaware and Chester County Correctional Facilities and as a limousine driver. He ended his career at SEPTA in 2021. He spent the last years enjoying his passions, cars, traveling, food, and family. He is survived by his wife of 43 years, Valerie McMillan Thomas, their daughter, Tashida Thomas, two grandchildren, Talim and Shalaya Thomas, seven si siblings, Dolores Slaughter, and Geraldine, Wendy, Donald, Ruth, Mary, and Gloria Thomas, adopted sister, Fanny Stevens, two sisters-in-law, Sandra McMillan and Sylvia Brigman, three brothers-in-law, Robert and Vincent McMillan, and Michael Brigman, and an aunt, Emma Jean Edwards, and a host of loving nieces, nephews, great nieces and nephews, relatives and friends. In addition to his parents, he is predeceased by his brother, George Knox. Thank you for your listening. May you all be blessed and may God continue to Amen. Can we 
give God praise for a life well lived. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have the following individuals to come. We're going to call forth Bishop Horace W. Strand of Faith Temple Holy Church in Chester, Pennsylvania, with words of comfort. Following those words of comfort, we'll have a solo by Leroy Blanding. Following the solo, we will have family reflections, um, and the order of those reflections are in your bulletin. Let's say amen for them as they come in that order. Praise the Lord. First, giving honor to God, our Father, and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the pastor of this great church, to all the members of God's service, and to my family. At such an hour as this, I've been asked to give some words of comfort. I also need some words of comfort for myself as well, because this was my brother as well as my cousin. In the Hebrew language, there's no word for cousin. If you were born from your father's mother, a, brother, a sister, or father's brother, we all consider ourselves as brothers and sisters. And we come from a strong heritage as strands, although his last name was Thomas. I call all of y'all strands <laughs> because that's the root of all of us. Emma and Louis Strand. Jake Strand was Tim's father and also my father's brother. The obituary covered a whole lot of what I was thinking about the last time we were together and he was in the back of my house in his orange Corvette and the many times that uh, I'm walking down the street and I see this great big scepter bus and somebody's blowing the horn. <laughs> He always took time to be friendly and show his love as a man, a cousin, or shall I say brother. I think the greatest words of comfort that we all can live by is the words that Jesus spoke when he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions if it was not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there ye may be also. And the question was asked, uh, how do we know the way and how can we go there? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. See, death is something that before Christ came, we had a reason to be afraid of. But when Christ came, he defeated death, hell, in the grave and gave us hope beyond this life and this world so that through faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we will know that to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. If ever we need to be comforted with words, we need to understand that this is just a reminder to us that one day we may have to leave this world. And how we leave is determined by whether or not we believe the words that were spoken by Jesus or we live our life in our own terms without amen believing on his name. So I just want to encourage my family, as I've always had. It's amazing how not many of us men in this family live long. Uh, we don't get but so old. If we get to be 80, I don't know how many have, of my cousins have lived to be 80. I'm almost 70, and my brother's a little older than me. I guess he's about the oldest one I know. We've lost quite a few brothers. Calvin recently, Nate Strand, uh, Mike Strand, Raymond Strand, uh, we lost Harvey, and uh, we can go on. There's a few more. Butch died a long time ago, and Big Butch Bowens and, and uh, New York Bowman. We lost a lot, amen? And it, it's important for us to understand the uncertainty of life. 
and be ready by making peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. I won't say much more because we have a preacher who has a job to do, but I just want to encourage you to know that as a family, we need to hold on to our godly heritage. We were all taught the right way. We are men and women without excuses. Let's follow suit and obey the teachings of those who brought us this far by faith. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows go? Why? Should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus Watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His
watches, he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches, he watches me. Oh, I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches. Oh, I know. I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eye is on the stage. That's a good place to give God praise. Come on, that's a good place to give God praise. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know. And I know. Look down your row and tell somebody, I know. He watches. He watches. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I know. Hallelujah. I know that he watches over me. Hallelujah. This time we're having the family reflections. I'm going to ask um, Sandra Bolin to come. Following her will be Fanny Stevens, and then Shalia Thomas will close out those family reflections. Say amen for them as they come. Amen. Amen. I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for all you do. Help, wealth, wisdom, and protection. And I'd like to say that when I got the call about Kenny, the first thing that came to my mind was to remember to be thankful and give love and say love to all those that you love as you can, while you can, in the voice that you can. And I want to say thank you for being an example of a loving father, a loving family man, for being a wonderful model and for having passion and for putting up with me on the nights that I couldn't find Sylvia, you and Val put me up. At night, I couldn't find her. Thank you for always being kind when you heard my voice. Thank you for always being happy and positive when we call. Your greetings always made me and others feel loved and welcome. So I just want to say that one of my favorite reflections at a time like this is, when you hear my homegoing service, don't you worry about me. When you hear my homegoing service, don't you worry about me. Because I made preparations a long time ago. I'm packed and all ready to go on a journey home. The road has been paved, and I won't be alone. I love you, cousin. Say hello to Uncle Jake and Aunt Frances and everybody. So thank you for letting me share a few of those family reflections, and I love you all. God bless you.
brother Kenny. <laughs> Boy, I have some good memories. Um, I'm going to miss him. He would call me. We would talk two times a day. If I didn't hear from him, he would call me and say, hey, sis, what's going on? Um, I'm going to miss him because we hung out for barbecues, holidays. I was, we were at his house, my house. Um, especially the games, the sports. We talked so much stuff about the sports. Um, Kenny and I always had projects. And all Val would do was shake her head. Um, I love cars. I love old cars, new cars. So Kenny would call and tell me about the truck that he's going to buy. Then we would tell Val later on. Um, he had me riding in the Corvette, which I almost fainted in. Um, and he said, Fanny, this needs to be your Corvette. No, 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 I do not want that Corvette. Um, he called me when he got that big car that's sitting in the driveway. All the old cars. He know I love cars. We talked about cars, the engines, and everything. Um, our last, I'll tell you about our last project, which was, well, Kenny had a habit of calling me during the day. Fanny, um, meet me down at BJ's. What, Kenny? Um, come on, I got something to show you. Kenny, I'm not spending any money. But Fanny, you got to see this. So these, this was one of our projects. So I got down to BJ's. And Kenny said, Fanny, they got this 85-inch TV on sale. <laughs> okay. I said, you call me down here for that? He said, yeah, we got to have this 85-inch TV. I'm like, Kenny, where are we going to put this TV at? You know, Val didn't know about it. <laughs> um, so we stayed down there for hours talking about this TV, looking at it in the back, and we're talking about what it connects to and all this stuff. So Kenny said, Fanny, you got to get it. Okay. Kenny, we're going to get it. Kenny talked me into it. That night, we had two 85-inch TVs in the back <laughs> of his van. We didn't care how we paid for it, but we paid for it. Um, one was delivered to my house. One was delivered to Val's house. I guess Val found out that night, I guess. <laughs> um, so we got the TVs hung the same day. The man hung my TV, went up to Kenny's house, hung his TV. We were like twins. We did everything together. Um, we had a couple more projects. We were supposed to get the fireplace on the wall done. And we, um, the latest project was the pool table. Kenny had a pool table, so I wanted a pool table. So we got a pool table, and we were supposed to play pool together. Didn't get a chance to do it, but I cherish all those memories that we had. They were comical. Um, I'm going to miss him calling me up for all the projects that we did. We had about three more projects to do, um, but it's all good. Because I know he's not in any more pain. I'm going to miss him. Val, I thank you for taking such great care of Kenny. And I will miss him. Good morning, church. I'm not Shalia, but she's feeling a little overwhelmed with her grandfather leaving. But um, I'm going to stand in and just share a poem that Sister Geraldine wrote. And we wanted to share with all of you. It's been amazing learning more about my brother's life by visiting with all of you and having you be here, be a part of his home going, and learning how much he's touched each and every one of your lives. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this homegoing service for him. But we wanted to share that a missing in the Thomas sibling link is, is missing. Uh, a, a link in the chain is missing. Let me stick with what's here. A link in the chain is missing. A link in the Thomas sibling chain has been removed and our hearts are broken. No longer will we see your smiling face and hear your voice telling a story and taking forever to get it out. That's just Kenny's way. No longer will we have you suggesting we go to Maryland for dinner to eat crabs or go to Fort Washington to eat steaks. No longer will we see you drive up with yet another truck, car, truck, or some vehicle that you did not need or flat screen TV. <laughs> you were always there when called on and now we will experience a void. Somehow we'll get through this, but it will not be easy and it may take a long time. We pray that your body and soul are at rest, 
and that you are in paradise with our mother, father, grandparents, uncles, aunts, and all those who have gone before. We love you, Kenny, and will forever miss you. Sorrowfully submitted with broken hearts, your siblings and family. this time, we will have a solo, uh, Eric O'Neill, and then following that, we shall open the book and receive a message of encouragement and hope for this family. Say amen for him as he comes. Precious Lord. Take my hand, lead me Precious Lord, and lead me to Lady Valerie Thomas, to this entire family. On behalf of the officers and membership of Temple Baptist Church, I first want to thank you for this privilege to host your family and provide comfort to you in this most difficult time. As most of us know, grief is not something that we can turn off and on. Grief has a way of 
sneaking up on us um, in those moments when we are being present and active and doing things and one minute you're smiling and then another minute you're crying. So I want to say to this family, don't let anyone tell you that grief has an expiration date. However it is that you honor the life of Brother Kenneth, do it anyway. Honor him. If you're crying, cry. If you need to laugh, laugh. If you need to call someone on the phone and share a memory that popped up, call them. But know that Temple Baptist Church is here for you. And that even when the calls stop, the visits stop, the bringing of food to your home stops, know that our love and our prayers will keep on going. So I just wanted to say that we honor you. Can we thank God for this family once again? Uh, I want to say that um, when I received the program and saw the New Testament reading, um, I knew that it was confirmation what the Lord would have me to say today. And so the word was already read in your hearing out of John 14, verses 1 through 3. I want to focus your attention on that third verse. The third verse says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. God, you're my strength. You're my redeemer. Amen. That where I am, you will be also. For just a few moments, I want to tag this text as the Holy Spirit shall, can, and will guide with this thought in mind, where Jesus is. Where Jesus is. The text which lends its ear to us this morning finds Jesus explaining the nature of his going away and his return. He focuses the attention of his disciples on the fact that that he will soon leave them, but he will return. He explained the nature of his leaving, that is that he is going to prepare a place for them. On earth, Jesus used two phrases to describe the nature of the kingdom. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. In references to the kingdom of God, the nature, of the, the nature of the discussions focus on that spiritual realm that makes up the complete family of God. The kingdom of God is composite of all those who believe. On the other hand, the kingdom of heaven is a concrete place, not an abstract. When Christ talked among going away, to prepare a place for believers. He was not talking about a spiritual place. He was talking about a real place in the kingdom of heaven. He noted that in the Father's house, there were many mansions or places for the righteous to spend eternity. These places would not be spiritual, but real abodes. His purpose in leaving was to go and prepare a place such believers could spend eternity with him. The key thought here 
is that where I am, you, good God from on high, may be also. Three things I want to leave with you and then promise I'll be out of your way. The first point I want to leave with you is that some run from God's presence. Some run from God's presence. There are many, many today who run from God's presence rather than try to be where the Lord is. Got a few witnesses that I want to call to the witness stand. Jonah was given a command by God to go and preach to the people of Nineveh. Jonah did not like his assignment and sought to go in the opposite direction than God had commanded. He boarded a boat and sailed away from God only to learn that you can run, but you can't hide. Yeah, yeah, he, he was tossed overboard, swallowed by a big fish, and stayed in his belly for three days and three nights. Then and only then did he conclude that it would be better for him to obey God rather than try to run from his assigned purpose. Another witness I want to call to the stand, the prodigal son found himself in similar circumstances. He was at home with his father, but constantly mused about what lay outside of the home. He wanted to be away from his presence. He left home and wasted his substance in the far country, outside of the presence of his father. It was not until he was broken and hungry that he came to himself and said, I will arise and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against God and thee. Today there are many who are not happy living in the presence of God. Like Jonah, they are trying to avoid doing what God wants him to, or like the prodigal son, he is trying to live far away from God. These are people who know the direction they should take in life, but almost go just the opposite. They have fascination with worldly lifestyles and activities take them further from God daily. The redeeming factor in this circumstance is the same redeeming factor that the prodigal son experienced, and that is, watch this, the forgiveness of God. The Bible teaches the prodigal son came to himself and went back home. When he returned home, he found his father waiting with arms open to forgive him. And I come to tell you that those today who choose to return to God's presence will find that he is just as forgiving now as he was then, still saying all is forgiven. Second thing, second thing I want to leave with you is that in the storm, be where Jesus is. In the storm, be where Jesus is. While there are some who run from God's presence, there are others who have found that as long as we are in God's presence, <laughs> we are safe. When Jesus was riding a boat, once he went, he went to sleep below deck. A great storm broke out and the shipmen became afraid because of the severity of the storm. As the wind and waves increased in intensity, many feared for their lives until somebody remembered that Jesus, good God from on high, that Jesus was on board. <coughs> they, they went to him and found that he was asleep. One cried out, Master, the tempest is raging. Do you not care that we are perishing? Jesus awoke, saw the tempest, and quieted the storm with the simple word, peace, be still. And immediately, y'all going to help me preach this message, immediately the storm ceased. Today, storms still break out in our lives. But it's a good idea to have Jesus on board. 
The storms of life are varied. Sometimes it's family or relationship issues. Sometimes it's doubt and faith struggles. Storms are sometimes economic. Money problems wreck lives like tidal waves as relationships crumble and families sh uh, shatter. However, no matter how fierce the storm, there is still hope as long as Jesus is on board. When Jesus is on board, there is hope for the hopeless. There is light for darkened paths. There's inspiration for the dispirited. There is encouragement for the discouraged. As long as Jesus is on board, we can call on Jesus and he can speak to the wind and command them to be still. You ought to look down your row and say, I know that's right. Be where Jesus is in the storm. Finally, last point is, in death, be where Jesus is. Even when death knocks on our door, it is a good idea to be where Jesus is. When Lazarus died, Mary and Martha were upset with Jesus. Because he did not respond quickly enough to their message that Lazarus was sick. When Jesus arrived, Lazarus had been dead for several days. And deterioration had set in. Somebody said he's stinking. In their hurt, the sisters blamed Jesus for not being there for Lazarus. They felt he could have prevented the death. Jesus had to look at him and remind them that he is the resurrection. He is the life. And then promptly demonstrated that whenever he is present, whew, no circumstance is a total loss. Whew, he caused Lazarus to rise from the dead still wrapped in his funeral clothes as a demonstration of his command over the elements of the universe. Here to tell you, sisters and brothers, that when death comes into our lives, the fact that Jesus is near always gives us hope for the future. Those who die in the Lord have the assurance of knowing that death is not a reality for true believers. But a departure, I said it's a departure from this life into the next. When Jesus is near, death is a mixed bag of happiness and sadness. It is happiness because we know that those who believe are absent from the body and present with the Lord. It is sadness because we no longer have the joy of the company of the physical presence of our brother Kenneth. There is a tear falling from our eye and a smile on our face at the exact same time. We smile because even though we well up on the inside with emotion, we know that we are still children of the king. We know that God is still the same God today that he was in time past. He is still the same God that wakes us up every morning, puts clothes on our back, puts shoes on our feet, gives us the activities of our life. He's the same God that blesses us with health and strength. No matter how downhearted we might feel, we know in our hearts that God still loves us. And I come to tell you that where Jesus is, Curse wheels don't roll. Where Jesus is, morticians got to close up their shop. Where Jesus is, every day is Sunday. It's always howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. No wonder the songwriter declare, come and go. Come and go with me to my father's house. In my father's house, there is joy. In my father's house, there is peace. In my father's house, there is 
love. Come and go. Go with me to my father's house. Is there anybody here that wants to go where Jesus is? Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all pass. Cares all pass. Cares all pass. Cares all pass. Home at last. Ever to rejoice. Do you know him? Have you tried him? Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? Come on and give him glory. Tell somebody, I want to be where Jesus is. Tell somebody else, I want to be where Jesus is. Sisters and brothers, I want to be. Woo, hey, glory. I want to be where Jesus is. I refuse to live in hell, then die and go to hell. I want to be where Jesus is. I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make you a ruler over many. We want to be where Jesus is. No more crying there. I'm going to see the king. Ain't no suffering there. There'll be no funeral homes when we get there. There'll be no crying. There'll be no sadness. There'll be joy over there. And to get to where he is, you've got to know him for yourself. Listen, your spouse won't be standing next to you when you get up there. It's going to be you and your Savior face to face. And he's going to roll out the list. What you've been doing down here. And how you've been serving him while you're down here. And then once he's called that roll, some glad morning when this life is over I want to hear him say well done brother Kenny beat us there but I got news for you brother Kenny you can't crown him till I get there come on give God great praise in this house We never want to make the assumption that everybody under the sound of my voice knows Jesus. Oftentimes, we gloss over the call to discipleship at home goings. But we want to make it a priority that wherever we are, Temple know what happened when I come down here on this floor. Don't want to make an assumption that everybody in here knows Jesus. I'm here to tell you that in my short time being on this earth, besides being a Steelers fan, 
the best, <laughs> the best decision I made <laughs> was making Jesus my choice. And I'm here to tell you, sisters and brothers, that it's no tricks, it's no gimmicks, there's no games to this thing called salvation. God is calling us in this hour to make our calling and election sure. Don't leave these four consecrated walls without giving Jesus your heart. Not going to embarrass anyone. Don't, you don't have to come down the aisle. But if you're here today and you know you need to make Jesus your savior. I want you to pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of saving. Bible record makes it clear. If I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, I shall be saved. And so if you believe, like Romans 10 and 9, the Bible says you are saved. If you're in need of a church home, we're here every Sunday, 9 a.m. Sunday school, 10.30 a.m. worship, 7.36, West 7th Street, Chester, Pennsylvania, 19013. We would love for you to put your hands to the plow and do what God has called and purposed you to do. If you're saved, know you're saved. And you're a part of God's family. Come on and give God praise in this house. going to call forth now the directors from the Earl Foster Funeral Home so that we may get final instructions. I'm going to do the committal here if that's all right. For as much as it has pleased the almighty God to take out of this world our deceased brother Kenny to commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, save the spirit, that they may rest from their labor and their works do follow them. Amen.
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou art with me. The rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 